parapedia. Para p- <sighs> Hold on a minute. Parapetea. Parapetea. Hmm. Parapetea is a first slash third person shooter slash immersive sim slash anime girl with guns simulator from Polish developer Ninth Exodus. The release date is coming, coming soon. soon, but luckily there's a substantial demo available on Steam. And when I say substantial, this may as well be early access, but without having to pay for it. I've clocked more than six hours on this thing and I still haven't actually finished it. There's some great stuff that contributed to this playtime and some not so great stuff, but I'll get to that. First off, in Peripatea, you play as a cybernetic super soldier named Marie in a dystopian cyberpunk future. She works as a mercenary, taking on pretty much any job as long as it pays. Deliveries, reconnaissance, assassination, you name it. The game takes place in an Eastern European alternate timeline where the Soviet Union has still fallen, but it happened to take a lot more of Europe down with it. Marie is looking for a mysterious place called The Bunker where supposedly the Soviets stashed a whole bunch of technology, and a lot of factions in the world at large are looking for it. To get close to the bunker, Marie will have to get on the good side of one or more of these factions to get more information and make her way to the bunker's location. At least, that's the way the barman in the tutorial mission lays it out for you. As soon as you select New Game, you're thrust into the perspective of Marie, but you can also scroll your mouse wheel to get a third-person view of the surroundings. But, uh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't really recommend playing it this way. Anyway, the tutorial mission has you searching for a key card. The barman gives you directions for how to find a group of people who are holding it, and he doesn't care how you go about getting your hands on it. In true Imsim fashion, you could sneak into the building and stealth around trying to find it on your own, or you could go in guns blazing, or you could find one of the members of the group holed up in the building and offer to pay for the card. This route also gives you another option. You could do a quest for the group, which involves killing some opium dealers in a nearby apartment building. After doing that, they let you walk right in and take the card. And this is just the tutorial. Each mission included in the demo offers a variety of characters, quests, and different approaches to each situation. It's pretty impressive. I also like this little interface you've got for dialogue. The whole HUD and UI looks really tactile and analog, and it fits the grimy, broken down retro look of the world as a whole, except maybe Marie's visibility indicator here in the bottom left. I'll get back to how that works later. But yeah, Marie and some of the other more anime-inspired characters you meet along the way look a bit out of place in this world of Fallout-style gas masks and long black trench coats. Although those gas masks could also be a Jinro reference too, so what the hell do I know? I've seen some people make a big deal out of the uncanny anime-ness of some of the characters and comments on Steam and other places, but it doesn't really bother me. I think the clashing of styles kind of works for the tone of the story and setting. While it dabbles in alternative history politics and very real-world inspired corporate greed. Some of the character dialogue, along with the mishmash art style and the casual brutality of the combat, lend it all an absurdity that crashes together and gives the game a unique energy and personality, which serves to almost elevate it above its many influences. And it clearly wears those influences on its sleeve. As soon as you step outside of the bar where you start the game, you get a taste of the art direction, which has a deus ex crustiness to it. Ninth Exodus say in the Steam description that they were heavily inspired by the immersive sims of Ion Storm as well as Looking Glass Studios. The textures and model work here are on par with the first Deus Ex, and I think the lo-fi look adds to its charm. Buildings are wrapped in illustrated textures, the skyboxes are hazy and surreal, and it all ends the game a distinct and oppressive look. I really like it. You've got all the old Imsim favorites too, like stacking boxes. Gotta have box stacking if you want to be taken seriously in the Imsim market. And look at these jumping climbing mechanics. I mean, hey, this is an Eastern European developer. You had to know the jank was there. I mean, if you've been looking at the footage, you can just smell the jank emanating off of it. Ah, <sighs> oh, yeah, get a whiff of that. But anyway, after that, you'll probably notice one of Peripatea's other major influences, at least in the level design and that would be I, Divine Cybermancy. That game had sprawling levels that were incredibly easy to get lost in, and yeah, Peripatea's levels are absolutely massive. Remember earlier when I said that there was some not so great involved in my six plus hour playtime? Yeah, the size of the level design is definitely one of those maybe not so good elements, but you know, 
Don't get me wrong, the scale is impressive and lends a crushing atmosphere to the game. It feels dehumanizing to stand among these gigantic broken buildings. You are just an ant crawling around these monolithic structures, and most of them aren't just for show. If you see something off in the distance, some severed walkway or hollowed out building, most likely you can go there. But because everything is so huge and because most quest givers only hand out bare bones directions toward objectives, you will definitely spend a lot of your time wandering around vast, sometimes empty areas, most of the time wondering if you're actually heading in the right direction. It's great that you can wander the cityscape and explore all manner of places, but do you actually need to? Not really. It would be really cool if the finished game had more side content in some of these places that would make venturing off into the unknown more rewarding. And who knows, maybe it will. But yeah, it really is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, I like the vagueness and the immense scale of everything. It makes the world feel real and believable and lends it an atmosphere all its own. I like when NPCs and games just give verbal directions that you need to write down or remember. But it would be nice if some of the directions were a bit more detailed, or the levels themselves had a bit more signposting for the player. I'm not talking map markers or like things in the environment that funnel you or say, hey dummy, don't explore or pay attention to your surroundings, objective's right here. But maybe something subtle like some lighting guiding your way or more detail in the environment that would draw your eye to lead you in a direction so you get some sense that you're going the right way. For most of the levels, I eventually ended up finding my objective, and I definitely have some memorable moments wandering around lost and stumbling on groups of enemies or stashes of items, but a lot of the time I was just lost lost in huge empty environments. I think with a bit more polish in the level designs, you could have it both ways. Vast, explorable locations to give a sense of scale and a clearer sense of direction. The gunplay feels surprisingly satisfying, considering the jank in the movement. There are a ton of guns to try out in this demo. In fact, there's a giant stash of them in the basement of Marie's apartment building, her makeshift shooting gallery. They all feel pretty distinct and interesting. Shotguns have just the right amount of kick, sniper rifles feel good to pull off headshots with. There are a variety of pistols, a gatling gun, even some melee weapons. Ammo is doled out in different calibers, and the game has an interesting reload mechanic where you have to take the magazine out of the gun, load bullets manually, then pop the magazine back in. You can also prep multiple magazines from your bullet supply if you find the same guns lying around. Just extract the magazine and sell or toss the duplicate weapon. Once you have extra magazines filled with bullets, you can reload the traditional way by just pressing the R key. This is actually a mechanic taken from I Divine Cybermancy as well. And look at that grid inventory. The more OCD of you in the audience, just please ignore my untidiness, I'm sorry. You can hack stuff too. And the hacking minigame is pretty cool, actually. You just mash your keyboard to try to guess the letters for the password. You have a time limit for each attempt and a certain number of attempts depending on the terminal. If you fail, you'll be locked out and need to find the password some other way. But it makes you feel like you're a hacker in one of those really bad, like, 90s movies who's just mindlessly tapping away on their keyboard. Actually, I'm pretty sure movies even nowadays still do that kind of thing. There are also stealth mechanics. In a nod to the Thief games, you have an icon in the bottom left that indicates the amount of light in the area and how visible you are to enemies. This is that anime icon I was talking about earlier. There's also a sound meter that tells you how loud your footsteps are, and this is affected by flooring materials too. These stealth mechanics work pretty well. If you stick to the shadows and stay quiet, you can get the jump on a lot of enemies. Speaking of shadows, the game can be incredibly dark in some areas, and has some lighting issues that still need to be ironed out. But the darkness is an ever-present thing when it's intentional. Even when it's not, though, you've got something to help you out with that. Night Vision. Since Marie is a robot, she has cybernetic enhancements that she can cycle through. Night Vision is one, but you also have Enhanced Strength, Enhanced Speed, which also lets you jump higher, Stealth Camo, and a Bullet Time-like ability that lets you slow down time. Hello, Max Payne. How long you can use these enhancements for is dictated by your battery meter, which slowly drains when any of them are active. You can find or buy batteries of varying sizes to restore this meter. It's unclear if these skills are just included for demo purposes, or if they'll all be unlocked like this from the start in the final game. We'll just have to wait and see. It's also unknown if there will be any way to increase the duration of the battery, or your health. The demo doesn't feature any RPG mechanics such as stats or upgradable skills. Not saying that it should, just pointing it out. Honestly, the way the demo has things set up and the way that Parapatea allows you to experiment on your own with Marie's abilities feels pretty good as it is. So then, yeah, the demo has some technical issues. I mentioned the lighting, but then there's the stuttering, which admittedly is pretty bad. It could use some better optimization, some heavy optimization. The game looks like it could run on a potato, but I have a 3070 and it still makes my computer sound like it's about to set a flame. 
The stuttering seems to get especially bad in large open areas and during gunfights with multiple enemies. But despite a few complaints, I think Parapatea has huge potential. I point out its flaws because I want it to be as good as it can be. I love the world and atmosphere that they're building here. I'd say my over six hours of playtime of just this demo is testament to how much I like this thing. It's got so much charm and is clearly a labor of love from its creators. I mean, just look at Marie's apartment. This whole apartment building is a shithole, but I want to live here. I mean, I don't really. I, it looks like anything you touch will give you tetanus or hepatitis, and that train going by the window every few minutes would defo be a deal breaker. But it's got such a vibe. The first time I came here, I just kind of hung out, watching the lights from the train illuminate through the windows as it passed, staring at the strange amalgamation of tech bundled together in the living room area like something out of a Ghost in the Shell illustration or one of the later episodes of Lane. Check out this crusty, cozy bedroom with a CRT on the end of the bed. God damn. There's even a cactus in the kitchen that Marie talks to, and you can choose your attitude towards it. I dig this so much. So anyway, that's Parapatea. It's got quite a lengthy demo, and if you're into immersive sims or stealth games or cyberpunk or anime or, you know, just any of the above, then you should at least give it a try. Get past some of its jank and technical issues, and you might just find something to get lost in for several hours. So... Parapatea. Check it out. Dungeon Chill. Out.